Shrewsbury tonight staged the tie of the round. The visitors Manchester United for a tie charged with anticipation and needle. Indifference so far in the league, United are sparking in the cup. The only side to date to have beaten Liverpool. an explosive fortnight for British middleweights, we talk live to the man who's come off simply the best, Chris Eubank. Good evening on another busy and quite breathtaking night in the Rumbelows League Cup. They've been playing for a place in the last eight and the winners will discover their fate at the end of the programme when the quarter-final draw comes direct from Highbury. We'll be going there in a few moments for what was justifiably billed a tie of the round between Arsenal and Manchester United. But we'll start with a quite sensational display at Highfield Road between Coventry City and the holders Nottingham Forest. Forest unbeaten in 22 matches in the competition and looking to land the trophy for the third year in succession. Now before the game, player manager Terry Butcher surprised the fans by leaving himself out of the City lineup for the first time since he joined the club. Our commentator, Alan Parry. He's just out of the picture at the moment, Billing, the big centre-half has come forward. There he is, number five, Regis. Also a possible target here. It goes into the near post, in fact... Covering by Coventry. Jemson gets it back to him again and a good ball for Clough. Unbelievable, it's another goal. Clough second, Nottingham Forest second, the sixth of the half, with three minutes still to play in the end of, to the end of all. It's now Coventry four, Nottingham Forest two. Keen. Pierce with the cross. Could have gone anywhere and still could. Now the linesman has flagged and he's given a goal. And Nottingham Forest have pulled it back to 4 3. Good ball. Parker into space and he's lost his marker well. And hit it. his head, he played it in towards the far post, Regis again has it gone in, yes it's forced in Livingston finally forcing the ball in and Coventry City are back in front I think every game's like that, I'll either be grey or, or bald at the time I'm 33 but uh, no it's great, it's great for the fans that we've, that we've scored five goals, obviously not so good that we've laid in four but uh, it was a, a rip roarer anyway and uh, I think anybody who was neutral in the crowd got their, got their money's worth tonight Going into that game, Nottingham Forest cup holders for the last two years in this competition, unbeaten for 22 games. I mean, that, that looked very formidable for you, didn't it? Well, it proved tonight that they are great uh, cup fighters. They have got a great record in, in this competition, and they were obviously determined not to uh, relinquish uh, the, the trophy very easily. Um, and to be 4-0 down, they just gave it a go. And um, all credit to them for coming back to 4-4. Um, but even at 4-4, even at I still fancied our team to do well. And, you know, towards the end, it could have been, it could have been either way. But um, we're obviously pleased. The lads are delighted. And, uh, we're in the hat again. 
It was incredible, wasn't it? Afterwards, there was a bit of a set to between Kevin Gallagher and Nigel Clough because they both scored a hat trick, both wanted the match ball. Uh, Clough tried to grab it, but the ref wouldn't let him. And then later on, Terry Butcher said that uh, Gallagher had the ball or a ball. So it's all a load of claim and counterclaim, isn't it? Now, the big one in London between Arsenal and Manchester United lived up to expectations as well with some cracking goals. We're off to Highbury next. We prepare for the tie between Arsenal and Manchester United, which triggered a sharp intake of breath when it was pulled out of the bag so soon after the gruesome brawl involving the two clubs just over a month ago. Let's hope it's the football we'll be talking about after their latest meeting, this time in round four of the League Cup. Our commentator, Brian Moore. There's no doubt the reputation of two great old clubs was scarred by those moments of madness at Old Trafford last month, the loutish behaviour of some of the players unworthy of the shirts they wore. Even so, and partly perhaps because of it, it's close to a full house at Highbury tonight, all ticket on a night when the air will certainly crackle with competition, but when decent sporting behaviour must also be evident, as I think it will be. And so for once, we feature first the referee, the most senior official on the list in terms of age, 51-year-old John Martin of Alton in Hampshire, a steady, firm hand required from him tonight. The teams then, Arsenal field the side that won with a late burst at Queen's Park Rangers on Saturday, a defence with seven clean sheets in the last nine, and an attack that is now firing well. Smith with five, three in the last two games, Merson with six, Limpar the Swede, top scorer with eight. Certainly pressure on Tony Adams in a week when he finds himself reported to the FA for a gesture he made to the QPR crowd after an Arsenal goal on Saturday. But I fancy he can handle that. Manchester United so disappointed with the defeat by Chelsea live on ITV on Sunday. After a run of seven games unbeaten, they make a surprise change. Neil Webb is dropped to substitute for the first time. The number seven shirt going to Lee Sharp. Sharp presumably down the left and it could mean another switch to the right for Danny Wallace. So Neil Webb loses his place, sits on the bench with Mal Donaghy. Two big clubs then looking for a place in the quarter-finals. And in box 34 here at Highbury, officials of the league, of Rumbelows and guest Bobby Moore, they are meeting, it's here that the draw will be made later on, and you of course will see it for yourselves. Football really must be the winner. Manchester United in the change strip of blue, attacking the goal to our left. Up to Danny Wallace, on towards Hughes, and Seaman quickly there. Arsenal unbeaten this season in 17 games, the best start the Gunners have had in 43 years. It's a throw then to. Uh, Manchester United, Clayton Blackmore with it, to Paul Ince. Hit high again towards Hughes. Knocked down nicely there for Sharp. Wallace. A foul there by Davis. And John Martin very quickly on the scene there. A free kick then to Manchester United. Tremendous amount at stake for both these clubs, particularly for Manchester United. Their chances of the league championship slipping away. Blackmore shot, hits with great venom! Terrific shot! And Manchester United go into the lead. Inside two minutes. Just a little touch of a free kick to him. And he drove it so beautifully just inside David Seaman's post. United in the lead. And a really dramatic start then to the big night here at Highbury. And back to Seaman. Dixon. A lot of pace about this early game. The pitch in terrific condition as well. Here's Smith. Stopped by Pallister. Sharp. United's free kick, back with Les Sweeney. And they allowed that to go a long way as Hughes and uh, Wallace were homing in on David Seaman.
certainly a white hot atmosphere out on the pitch. Up goes Bruce. Up gone by Sharp towards Hughes. Sharp going on, an excellent advantage played there by the referee. Sharp with Wallace in there. Adams choosing his moment well, but still Sharp did well. And uh, Seaman died for that one and needed to because Wallace was just behind him. Terrific work there by Lee Sharp. Good and now Perry Groves at the other end for Arsenal. Bruce trying to get in there. Groves going on. A terrific bit of goalkeeping that time by Seeley. Well, this is a cup tie that really is living up to its billing. Great burst at both ends. This was the break that put Perry Groves in. Bruce couldn't quite hold him, but Seeley did very well indeed. Davis with the corner for Arsenal, floated in again towards Bold. Callister got above him. Deke, Dixon Deke, Deke, will return it now. No, plays it wide for Davis. Deke, Deke, Luke. And the uh, referee spotting an infringement. The linesman also inside that Manchester United penalty area. Ooh, there was a bit of shoving inside the box there. Seeley certainly reacted superbly when Perry Groves was through. And it's a kick. McClare, hustled by Winterburn. This is Phelan. Wallace in the middle, and he couldn't quite reach Hughes with that one as Arsenal bring it away now with Paul Davis. A lovely ball now for Dixon. Thomas has made a tremendous surging run through the middle, so has Groves. And Merson's in there too, and Arsenal just couldn't find the right person there to finish it off. But what a great move that was. From one end of the field, from one side of the field to the other. Ending up here with Dixon's ball in. And it looked as though any one of three or four might have had a go at that. In the end, it went into the side netting. Arsenal's corner. Touch on by Smith, but over the top, goal kick. Steve Bold. Not amongst the goal scorers for some time. In fact, his last goal was in the season before last. But always a threat at that near post with a flick on. Seamy with the kick. Limpar. Stopped by Ince. A combination of Ince and Hughes. Blackmore playing it forward. Wallace again looking really lively. Danny Wallace. And then just pulled it wide. But Wallace is beginning to show the Southampton form that attracted Alec Ferguson in the first place bought him very expensively from the South Coast Club took some time to settle in at Old Trafford but it looks as though Danny Wallace is really beginning to motor for United here's Smith again and out well by Pallister that's a touch there McClare from Hughes' touch and now to Sharp onto the left foot good save by Seaman and McClare puts it over well, United had a real chance there wasn't quite the conviction that was required really about Lee Sharp's shot and although it was a good save by Seaman he had the feeling that something might have been taken after that it was a lovely move McClare's ball through to Lee Sharp onto the left foot not with really quite the power enough to worry Seaman that much and in the end McClare puts it over United's throw, or rather Arsenal's throw, which Harry Groves will take. Oh, a slip by Irwin. And Irwin back at him. But concedes the free kick. 
Foul there by the fullback on Alan Smith. And a free kick to Arsenal in a could be a dangerous situation on that far side. Davis. Thomas. Oh, he sidestepped the challenge of Sharp well there. He's gone past another one as well. A little touch. Thomas still going through there, looking to finish it off. Well, that was a great bit of play there by Michael Thomas. Goes past one. And the little touch, and he almost got in there as well, Thomas, to finish it off. Hughes has gone off on a run. Winterbird holding up for McClare very well there. Wallace on the far side keeps it in play very well. And a good ball played in there for Irwin. Now for towards uh, the Sharp. And it's Dixon who puts it over for the corner. Lee Sharp then. Blackmore, getting it to Sharp, into Wallace, oh now for Hughes, another one, Mark Hughes number two, and what a brilliant move that was by United. Played in by Sharp, Wallace, a lovely ball by him. Thank you very much, says Hughes, stretching out and planting it wide of the goalkeeper. Dixon knocking it forward. Limpar. Stopped by Pallister. Hintz. Limpar. Then pass throw, trying to get Smith away. Bruce was there for Manchester United. Bowl. Davis. Thomas. Perry Groves. Hughes. Offside this time. It wasn't. The referee allowed the game to go on. It's with Danny Wallace. That was a lovely ball by Wallace into the path of Mark Hughes. And here he is now, tormenting the Steve Bowl. Three men, in fact, came across to uh, have a go at Wallace there. But it's still with Manchester United and Lee Sharp. Onto the right foot. It's another one. 3 0. A fantastic goal by Lee Sharp. And the United bench are on their feet. And the United fans as well just can't believe it. That was a magnificent goal by Sharp. Looked up, saw the possibilities, deliberately curled it wide of David Seaman. And there's that neck billowing again with the third Manchester United goal. A superb strike by Lee Sharp. A deliberate curler and absolutely inch perfect. Stopping Merson. It's a monumental task now for Arsenal. And the night began to go badly for them right at the start with that goal by Clayton Blackmore from the free kick. And then Mark Hughes and that lovely ball played in by Danny Wallace. And then a wonderful individual effort there by Lee Sharp to make the third. It's a big, big job for Arsenal in the second half. United are coasting it at the moment. It's Arsenal nil, Manchester United three. A stunning first half performance then by Manchester United that will have people talking for quite a while and leaves Arsenal with an enormous job in the second. The last time Arsenal in fact conceded three goals in this competition last season when they went out to Oldham Athletic.
No substitutions on either side. Oh, I imagine uh, Kevin Campbell, an Arsenal striker, might get a good goal touch, might well be needed before this night is out. Up goes Adams. And Merson gets it back to goalkeeper David Seaman. will be in a fly on the Arsenal dressing room wall. Adams. Merson. Oh, that'll be cut out by McClare. That's a swing to burn. It's an Arsenal throw. McClare had an excellent first half for Manchester United. Winterburn with a throw. And an intentional trip, it seemed, there by Pallister. A free kick given to Arsenal. Perry Groves. Haven't quite seen the magic of Anders Limpar yet tonight. But maybe that's waiting for us in the second half. There's his free kick. Up goes Pallister. In goes Bold. And Thomas! Terrific save! Smith! And Arsenal get the encouragement of that early goal. Alan Smith. After Seeley had made a terrific save from Michael Thomas's shot. Then pass free kick. Pallister not really getting any distance with that header. And it falls in the end for Michael Thomas. Good work by Seeley. And Smith then rounding up that loose ball and giving Arsenal that goal they so badly needed. And by Thomas. A lovely ball played by Smith. Limpar into the path of Groves. Just held up there by Pallister and the back pass by Bruce. Prevented from going for the corner by Les Seely. Bruce is injured. And Seely knocks it into touch. United still leading by three goals to one. Smith's header. Bruce gets it away. Look at the space for Wallace. And Hughes is in there. Arsenal could be facing problems here. Into Mark Hughes. Good work by Seaman. And he just gets there as uh, Sharp came in. But a great break by United. A lovely ball played in by Danny Wallace. And Seaman got there just before Hughes. Thomas. And the offside flag is up. It was a great break by Manchester United. Look at the space there for Danny Wallace. And he flicks one in, flicks it in there with the outside of the boot. And Seaman just gathered it. You can see the frustration for uh, Mark Hughes. And Seaman just getting there before Lee Sharp. Last two uh, United men going for that, both Phelan and uh, Bruce. And Phelan rounding on Steve Bruce there. Maybe for not giving him a shout. Thomas. Oh, good the play there by Merson. Paul Merson. Terrific shots. Almost took Seeley off his feet. But it was the skill that uh, led to that opening that was so exceptional there by Paul Merson. <laughs> and hit with such power. This is the moment there, when he outwits Clayton Blackmore and then drives that one in there, which almost took Seeley off his feet. United still leading 3-1. Limpar. Dixon. Oh, almost got his way through there. Now McClare to Wallace. Sharp's gone off on a run. Hughes is up there too. Wallace might take some holding also. Really attacking this defence, and then in the end, a rather limp shot. Smith, Thomas, offside against Groves. It was the Arsenal fans, no point in complaining about that. Winterburn. Stopped by Seeley. A good foraging run there by the fullback. 
who hasn't scored for a couple of seasons, Nigel Winterburn, suddenly getting into a really good, strong position here. And then Seeley down well. And it's a real crackling atmosphere, which I hope you're enjoying at home. Dixon. Thomas lets it go through. Can Adams get there first? No. Now the break is on for Hughes. Arsenal might be caught now as Hughes goes on and is saved by Seaman. But that's the risk Arsenal presumably have got to take now. But United might well count them on, catch them on the counter-attack. Davis, a bit of space here for him. But Ince is in there, Davis retains it. Limpar, the little ball now to Thomas, driven again, just over. So a moment after Hughes is right through at the other end. This at the Manchester United end of it, as Thomas's shot goes over that crossbar. Seeley with a kick. Halfway through the second half. Dixon. Here's Smith. Oh, and he's got Groves away now. Limpar waiting in the middle. And it'll be a corner. Paul Davis in the corner. Deafening noise here at Highbury now as Arsenal come looking for that second goal. Adams was it over the line, Smith. Well, whether Tony Adams is header across the line first is open to doubt. What is sure is that Alan Smith finished it off. And Arsenal are right back in the game. There's the header by Adams. No, it needed Smith's touch. A good jump by the Arsenal captain. And look at the space right in that six-yard area that Merson was allowed. And United will be kicking themselves for letting that silly goal go away. Arsenal two, Manchester United three. And still almost 20 minutes to go. Blackmore with a throw for United to Sharp. Now Blackmore. Merson. Davis. Thomas is up ahead of him. Strong running player from the midfield. Smith is in there too. Stopped by Seeley. A terrific break again by Arsenal. And the United keeper dropped on that just in time. Great run by Michael Thomas. Onto the left foot. And then Seeley saves. Arsenal about to make a substitution. Kevin Campbell's coming on and uh, Anders Limpar's going off. So Campbell will uh, be up front now with Alan Smith. And Steve Bruce is going off for Manchester United. And now Donaghy is coming on. Can't hear yourself think, let alone speak here at the moment. Ince and now Donaghy. Army back to goalkeeper Seeley. Place in the quarterfinals of the Rumbelows League Cup at stake, remember. United leading by three goals to two. McClare to Irwin. Oh, some space here now for Hughes. No foul. Hughes finding Irwin. The cross is a good one. And it's a splendid goal there by Lee Sharp again. A finely worked goal by Manchester United. And that might just kill off Arsenal's comeback. 
The cross in by Irwin was a beauty, superbly met by Lee Sharp, his second goal of the game. And each of them of the highest quality. There's Irwin's cross, a flying header by Lee Sharp. Arsenal 2, Manchester United 4. Seely again taking no chances. In the uh, second tier of the stand here, the throw to Arsenal. Nigel Winterburn with it. There. Hughes to Wallace. There's a lovely chance now for Sharp on a hat trick. And he's got it! Five for United, three to Lee Sharp. And it's all over now, the big smile of that Man United player. Lee Sharp, a 19-year-old with a magic touch tonight. Danny Wallace, who's, I must say, he's had a hand in about two or three of the goals for Manchester United. And Sharp with a wicked finish there. It may have just come off Seaman. And billowed again into the corner of there. A delightful touch by Wallace. A striking finish again by Lee Shaw. The fifth for Manchester United, leading by five goals to two. He was saying at half-time that it, the last time Arsenal had conceded three was last season against Oldham. I think you'd need to thumb through quite a number of record books to find when they last conceded five. Campbell. Merson. Great shot, a lovely save by uh, Seeley. Merson really dug at that one. From uh, Campbell's ball, there's Merson's shot, and a flying save by Les Seeley. A corner to Arsenal. Palace up above them all. Sharp. Oh, there's a little touch. McLeod. To Hughes. Wallace waiting in the middle. McLeod's in there too. And it's another one, Wallace. It's six. The sky has fallen in on Arsenal tonight. As Danny Wallace makes it goal number six. McLeod's run, the ball played in by Hughes, Arsenal at sixes and sevens, it came off Seaman and finished off by Danny Wallace. But it's been a spectacular night of cup tie football as the final whistle goes. A night when truly football was the winner in the most spectacular terms and Manchester United also in the most spectacular terms. Thanks to those three goals, the hat-trick man there, 19-year-old Lee Sharp. Two fine shots and a header. And Blake, uh, Clayton Blackmore and Mark Hughes, the other scorers for Manchester United with Danny Wallace swaying in one right at the end. And Alan Smith with the two for Arsenal. A great night of cup tie football, played in the best possible spirit. Arsenal's unbeaten record is shattered, and it's Manchester United who go into the quarter-finals of the Rumble O' Cup. Arsenal 2, Manchester United 6. The ball as a result of your first hat-trick for Manchester United. Yeah, it's, uh, this will go in the cabinet with uh, some of the other trophies. Yeah, it's going to stay there. What a fabulous night for you and for the club generally. Yeah, it was always going to be a difficult tie, and to score six goals here, it's magnificent. And your first hat-trick, as we say, for Man United, uh, your first goal was quite stunning. We can have a look at that one again, actually, uh, Lee. Well, you draw it onto your right foot, and you yeah, were always just, looking, actually, to curl it, weren't you? Just got there in front of Lee Dixon, and uh, I just had a look, just about there. And I just swung the right foot, and it went in. Now all the way, you're hoping? Well, I hope so, yeah. yeah. Lee, thanks a lot, and well done. Thanks very much. Cheers.
Not a total surprise that it was uh, Arsenal's heaviest defeat in the League Cup. In fact, it was their heaviest home defeat for 70 years. So we've had, uh, what, 17 goals in two games so far. Plenty more to come, eh, Tony? Well, can he take any more goals, or will that do? Well, stand by. No great surprises in tonight's other ties. But one second division team still in with a chance, and that's Sheffield Wednesday. Trevor Francis was recalled to Wednesday's starting lineup and fashioned the opening goal in the 14th minute. A perfect cross for David Hurst to head his 12th of the season. Ron Atkinson's boys, aiming for an immediate return to Division 1, should have been two up. Francis to Wilson, but Shilton equal to that. Guess who rescued Derby? Dean Saunders has done it once or twice now. Dramatic stuff as well. Briscoe against the bar. Micklewhite's shot turned against the post eventually, but there was Saunders from close range to force a replay at the baseball ground. Aston Villa were at home to Middlesbrough, another promotion-seeking team who were bamboozled by Tony Daly. He helped to engineer Villa's opener for Ormond Droid on 12 minutes. And Daly decided he didn't need any assistance on the hour. A terrific individual goal to make it 2-0. Wow. In ten minutes from time, David Platt's penalty persuaded Villa to relax. And that was nearly fatal. Bernie Slaven pulled a goal back in 86 minutes. And the Republic of Ireland striker caught Villa napping again in injury time. Suddenly it was 3-2. But the First Division side without Cascarino, left, who was left out, were through to the last eight. And the missing result tonight, Oxford United 1, Chelsea 2, two goals there for Gordon Jury. Well, a couple of interesting results in the UEFA Cup. Inter Milan, who spoiled it for Aston Villa a couple of weeks ago, trimmed Partizan 3-0 in their home leg. And more trouble for Bordeaux, who are caught up in a fraud scandal. They were thrashed 5-0 in Rome, a hat-trick there for Rudy Vullar. Thanks very much, Tony. Well, so to the draw now for the quarterfinals of the Rumbelows League Cup, which took place a short time ago at Highbury. As always, the master of ceremonies is the League Secretary, David Dent. We now come to the draw for the quarterfinals of the Rumbelows League Cup. Assisting me with the draw, on my right is Mr. Bill Cosgrove, commercial director of Rumbelows, and on my left, Bobby Moore. I will ask Bill to draw the home club. Number three. Coventry City. Number six. We'll play Sheffield Wednesday or Derby County. Number two. Chelsea. Number eight. We'll play Tottenham Hotspur. Number seven. Southampton. Number five. We'll play Manchester United. Number four. Leeds United. We'll play number one. We'll play Aston Villa. That concludes the draw. The ties are due to be played during the week commencing the 14th of January. Alex, so away to Southampton. I think as that draw was coming out and I said Southampton, I think I heard you say under your breath, I don't think we want that one. I was looking for a home draw <laughs> after winning here tonight. But it doesn't matter, you're in the quarter-final. Incentives are all there and um, it's been a marvellous cup run so far and we just want to continue. Yeah, it's not been easy for you. Liverpool and then Arsenal away and now Southampton away. Well, I think that's maybe the best for this club anyway. Uh, we seem to... Uh, to respond to the real challenges in Southampton, and Southampton is one of those. Mm. Right, let's just uh, have a look again at that cup draw. Just to remind you, Coventry City against Sheffield Wednesday or Derby. Coventry, of course, in the semi-final last year. Chelsea against Spurs, a repeat of the FA Cup final of, what, 67. Southampton, Manchester United, FA Cup final they had in 76. Leeds against Aston Villa. Leeds winners in 68. Villa have won the trophy three times. And uh, just a reminder that the ties to be played in the week beginning January the 14th. Well, now to boxing, and I'm joined by a man who needs no introduction to any of the millions who watched him defeat Nigel Benn two weeks ago. A fight described as the greatest ever to take place in a British ring. The question was whether the mind games of Chris Eubank could confound Benn's venomous aggression, and more specifically, if Eubank's jaw, so active outside the ring, could survive inside. So we're into the final minute of the second, then. 
Scheduled for 12. Oh, that was a short, Reg. Well, Eubanks has taken that one, Reg, yeah, so he can take a shot. That was the one. Yeah. Other fighters have, uh, haven't stood up with punches like that from Ben, have they? That was a good shot, and that certainly got a reaction from Eubanks. That was a lovely shot, Reg. That's answered a lot of questions, Jim. Almost the final piece of the jigsaw, really, because I, I often wondered whether he could really take that good a punch, because he's never had a punch compared with Ben. And Eubanks is going to have to come fights. back with punches, Reg. He's not going to be able to strut. He's going to have to try and hurt Ben. He's done it, Reg. He's done Ben by the look of it. He chopped that right hand down, though. He's right above us, Ben. Almost falling out of the ring on us here. This is what we've seen Ben so dangerous from this position. Here it comes. He's always saying he likes to battle back, Ben. Well, he's got to do it here. He tried to do it with Watson, but it didn't work. Ben's legs are shaking. Shot really Opened him up with the left hand and then shot the right hand over and it connected. There's the countdown. If he did go down, the count would continue. Except ben, ben's shaking, Reg. Oh, ben, right to his boots, Jim. Ben is shaking. The eyes wash, Reg. This will be the finish of the belt. Yes, it's all over there. in the ninth round. Chris Eubank is a very good fighter. Um, he's a very good kind of puncher. He's a very good thinking man's fighter. Uh, hard puncher. I'm not. The only worrying thing about him is I don't think he holds a body shot very well. Um, I think he has difficulty making the middleweight limit and being strong at it. He's still a growing, a growing man, but he's definitely one of the top three, four fighters in the world at the middleweight division. Major Ben has, as far as I'm concerned, has had his day. He's had a lot of hard fights. Still got a puncher's chance, but I think it's going to be very difficult for him to get a world title fight again. On the same bill, Michael Watson, the only other man to humble Ben, but later demolished by Mike McCallum, was out to re-establish his credentials against former golden boy Errol Christie. There was a slight delay there, that right hand punch, he couldn't... He really couldn't make that one, and I doubt now whether he's going to make that. He's calling to the ropes and he's counting him out because he's not in a position to defend himself. Watson is the dark horse of the whole bunch. He's a very promising middleweight. He's a very good all-rounder, does everything well. Um, I just don't know whether he's got enough class to win a world title, but he's certainly up there with the best. As for Harold Graham, the only boxer Eubank will acknowledge as the master, he seemed to be cruising for the WBC version of the title last Saturday in Spain. His opponent, the short-sighted Julian Jackson, looked completely in the dark, but suddenly the lights went out for the bomber. Using every inch. Oh, what a punch! I can't believe that. Never been stopped in his career, and he's out to the world. Harold has had his chance twice, and unfortunately has just failed to get it. Last time was probably the most unfortunate of all. He didn't take a lot of punishment, but he was not cold, and we don't know what sort of effect that's going to have on him. It'll be interesting to see. He certainly has the ability to get right back up there again. Whether or not he'll get a world title fight is another thing. You watch out from when he comes back, he'll box middleweights, super middleweights, light heavyweights, and heavyweights, and everybody will say, bloody hell, this Graham is fantastic. You watch it, he's going to get better. Chris Eubank, you were there at ringside for that one. That was a murderous punch, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It certainly was, yeah. Um, it's going to have devastating effects on him. Uh, I don't know whether he's going to come back. I would like to avenge that loss for him. I'd like to fight Julian Jackson, as I have already made clear to Barry Hearn and to uh, Carl King. So what are your immediate plans? My immediate plan is to get married. Yeah, that's definitely on, is it? On the 23rd of uh, December, yes. Well, on the strength of that emotional night when you proposed well, on the television. Now I'm successful, now I will get married. I've mm -hmm. always said I would do uh, as soon as I um, win a world championship, and I've done that, and so I will get married now. And that's next month, you say? Um, yeah. And then wh when do you think your next fight will be? And we're, talking about be? February, we're talking about February or March. Um, of, eight, of 91, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd prefer, as I said, to fight Julian Jackson. But Steve Collins is lined up, isn't he, the Irishman? I believe so. Um, I believe, and I'm willing to put it on the line, that I can beat him, and so we shall go ahead with it if we can't get Julian Jackson. Of course, you know what everyone wants, don't you? A rematch with Nigel Benn. Under the headline, what are they calling it? Unfinished business. Well, I've been in Spain for five days now. I've just got back into the country today, and um, they... People have said to me that Nigel has been 
fame and Ambrose has been fame that they want a rematch now. Um, I am the WBO champion of the world. Um, this is a democracy, it's not a dictatorship. This is my title, it belongs to me. Barry Hearn is my advisor and he shall call the shots, not them. We are the people who own the title. I am the man and I will continue to be the man for as long as I'm undefeated. If they have no say, it doesn't belong to them, it's my title. The only thing is you could make, what, half a million from that fight? I will not fight Nigel Ben for half a million pounds. That's out of the question. Um, he got one million for fighting me. I would be looking for far far more than a million pounds for fighting him because he's a very dangerous man. If he would like to be one of the best four middleweights on earth, then it's going to cost a lot more than that. Um, and as I said, he's, he's not to dictate to me. I'm, I'm the one who's did, who is to dictate, or Barry Hearn, not him. I thought you might have climbed down a bit since, since your fight with him, you know, change your attitude, but you're still as uh, confident as ever, aren't you? Well, of course, I'm 25 fights, 25 wins, I'm the champion of the world. Um, my confidence is 100%. I know I'm a, I'm a brilliant fighter. I've proven that. Um, well, yeah, presumably your life has absolutely changed fundamentally since that night in, um, in people's attitude to you, in, in the money that's coming in and so on, and they're just mm. the, the whole sort of future. I've always said every dog will have his day and I will have mine, and I'm having mine now. And one day I must come unstuck, but not by the likes of Nigel Ben. Let's have a look at your belt, by the way, because I know you're very proud of that. Sure. Understandably. Sure. Here it goes. That's upside down, isn't it? Oh, oh well, we'll find out, won't we? No, it isn't. <laughs> no, I've got it right. Fine. There it is. That's the World Boxing Organization title. I am the man. It means quite a lot to you, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I mean, I've worked eight years for this. Eight years, you know. I've denied myself um, everything what normal people have to get this, uh, this world title and I intend to unify it with the WBA or the WBC. WBA be belonging to Mike McCallum and the WBC belonging to Julian Jackson. Mm -hmm. I believe I can beat these people. Michael Nunn, um, I will fight him. I think I need another six or seven months in He training. said you're not in his class, didn't he? He can say what he pleases. He's entitled to his opinion. I'm entitled to mine and I believe I can beat him um, when the time is right. And if the business side of it is right, then the fight shall go ahead. But Mike McCallum and Julian Jackson um, are the, the, two most, um, uh, the two most important people in my life. They're the people I want to fight and I want well, their we'll titles. Be looking forward and, to see your next little fight. And I intend to take their titles. Well, Chris, thanks for joining us. We wish you well. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to mention now a competition for you with 12 of these videos on offer. The story of that dramatic fight in Birmingham two weeks ago. The topic, naturally enough, the middleweight scene and its four world champions. Chris Eubank is a WBO holder. Julian Jackson has the WBC version. We want to know who holds the IBF middleweight title and who's the WBA champion. Two names required, the IBF and the WBA world middleweight title holders. Answers in a postcard to boxing competition. Midweek sports special, 149 Tottenham Court Road, London, w one p 9LL. That's all for tonight. The next football on ITV comes this weekend in the match. What a game it is. The two so far unbeaten giants of the first division, Arsenal and Liverpool, coming together at Highbury. You can see it all live on Sunday afternoon, the programme starting at 5 to 3. It's been a great night for now. Good night.